This container has been loaded with 18 square meters of chipboard. This is to simulate the surface area of a large domestic kitchen. It should be remembered that there is only chipboard in this container and no synthetics such as plastics that would usually be found in domestic properties. When the heat is applied to the wood, the materials start to give off gases. At first, these gases will appear very light coloured. This is because it's the moisture being released from the material. This moisture is known as a passive. A passive is anything that will interfere with the development of the fire and can be moisture contained in the burning materials, moisture in the air within the room or water applied to the fire. If there is more than one fire in a room, sometimes the larger fire will rob the smaller fire of oxygen, causing the smaller fire to go out. Even though the fire appears to have gone out, the surfaces of the materials are still warm and still releasing gas. This means that the fire will reignite very easily unless the surfaces can be cooled. Once the moisture has been released, the gas will start to become darker. These darker gases are the flammable fire gases that will burn in a similar way to any other flammable gas such as propane. At this stage in the fire development, the fire gases will burn as they are being produced as there is plenty of oxygen present. This is known as a fuel controlled fire. As the fire gas burns, it gives off radiating heat that causes surrounding surfaces to decompose, thus producing more fire gases. This then burns, creating more heat, causing more surfaces to decompose and so the fire grows. As more fire gases are produced, they travel along the ceiling and will burn as they get closer to an opening where there is more oxygen. These flames licking across the ceiling is one of the signs of a flashover. At this time you can see the layers within the compartment. The overpressure at the top, which are hot fire gases. The underpressure at the bottom, which is clean air being drawn in. These are separated by the neutral plane. By shutting a window on the side of the container, this restricts the amount of hot fire gases leaving the compartment. This quickly lowers the neutral plane. If the door is closed, the fire gases have no way of escaping and therefore the neutral plane drops. The neutral plane is where the dark fire gases at the top or over pressure meet the clean air or under pressure at the bottom. When the door is opened, the gases can escape and the neutral plane will rise. Because the low neutral plane has caused a lack of oxygen, the fire has died back. Now the door is open and oxygen is entering the room. The fire will redevelop. We can see pyrolysis occurring when we look at the pallet near the door. We now have a flashover. The three signs of a flashover are Flames licking along the ceiling, radiating heat from above, items in the room pyrolyzing. With the compartment closed down, the gases have no way of escaping and the oxygen has no way of entering. This leads to there being a fuel rich atmosphere within the room changing the compartment from a fuel controlled fire to a ventilation controlled fire. When a vent is made, the overpressure escapes with a great amount of energy and the air containing oxygen rushes in. The atmosphere within the room now dilutes back from a too rich atmosphere to within its flammable range. This allows the remaining gas to combust. This is known as a backdraft. 
we can see some of the gases being drawn back into the compartment when we look at the sill of the window. These fire gases are being drawn in along with the oxygen as the oxygen is drawn towards the fire. We have a backdraft. When a backdraft occurs, the fire gases will all burn off very quickly and the fire may appear to be extinguished. However, because the surfaces are still hot, they are still releasing fresh gas. This means that the fire can redevelop very quickly. Crews entering the building should ensure they take with them suitable firefighting media as to be able to protect themselves if the fire redevelops. We now have a fuel controlled fire where there is plenty of oxygen within the compartment. This allows most of the fuels to burn as they are being produced. A fuel controlled fire is more predictable as it can be controlled by cooling the surfaces to stop the production of gas. With the fire growing, more fire gases are produced. These gases now travel along the ceiling searching for oxygen so that it can burn. Once again, we can see the flames starting to travel along the ceiling. With the container shut down, we can identify some of the typical signs of a backdraft. Gas escaping under pressure from gaps around doors and windows. This escaping gas may appear to be pulsing as a result of the expanding fire gas within the compartment. Surfaces of doors may appear hot. Windows may appear blackened and we will have a low neutral plane. These are the signs that crews should be looking for when carrying out their dynamic risk assessment. It is worth noting that when a window or door is opened, a backdraft will not happen immediately. It takes time for the mixture of gas and oxygen within the compartment to dilute back to within the flammable range. The period of time will depend on many factors such as the size of the compartment, the temperature within the compartment, the amount of fire loading and the size of the opening. Here we see that the fire gases will easily ignite and burn even though it is outside of the compartment on fire. When carrying out a dynamic risk assessment, the potential for a backdraft to occur should be judged and an appropriate plan of action formulated. The urgency of getting breathing apparatus teams into the building must be balanced against the degree of risk perceived. Where a high risk of backdraft is identified, consideration should be given to the initial adoption of defensive firefighting tactics. There may be times for example, such as fires in a standalone garage or a shed, where it would be best to allow a backdraft to occur and then fight the fire defensively. It By cooling these fire gases, we can prevent them from igniting. If the incident commander decides on the tactic of allowing the backdraft to occur, so that the defensive firefighting can take place, then the incident commander must ensure that the ventilation of the premises is conducted in a controlled and considered manner with due account taken of wind conditions. Effective communications are essential to achieve this. Ventilation points and exposed risks should be covered by water sprays to reduce the risk of external fire spread. Sufficient communications equipment will be needed to ensure that the incident commander can be in constant contact with the BA control officer supervising BA crews and also those ventilating premises from the outside. Another indication of a potential backdraft is the cauliflower-like rapidly expanding fire gases exiting the compartment. If there are any signs or symptoms of a backdraft coming from a compartment, it is important that BA crews recognise and react in the correct manner.
Offensing firefighting can take place by introducing water into the compartment. For every litre of water we put in the compartment, it will create 3,400 litres of steam. This steam will both cool and dilute the fire gases within the compartment. The branch should be set to a 30 degree cone in order that the water will absorb the heat and turn to steam quicker. Water is applied into the compartment by number 2 cracking the door and number 1 applying 3 pulses of water into the compartment. One top, one middle, one bottom. The compartment is then closed down to allow the water to turn into steam. By observing the colour of the gas each time the door is cracked, the BA team can see when fire gases are sufficiently diluted. The lighter the colour of the gas is, the more steam there is in the compartment. If the gases are still dark, then they are likely to be combustible. The time it takes to cool and dilute the gases will vary according to the size of the compartment and the temperature within the compartment. The problem we have now is that because of steam, visibility within the compartment will be very poor. However, visibility can be improved by using negative pressure ventilation. Negative pressure ventilation is performed by opening a window and directing a cone of water out of the window. The cone of water should cover 60% of the opening. As visibility is improved, the BA crews should be aware that fire gases are still being produced. If necessary, they should carry out gas cooling. The BA crew can control the fire by correct gas cooling techniques, pulsing small droplets of water into the hot fire gases. When it is safe to advance to the fire, the BA team should use a cone of water to cool any hot surfaces. This is done by using the branch to paint a lazy S over all the surfaces in order to stop pyrolysis taking place. This is known as indirect cooling. Water can now be applied directly to the seat of the fire to extinguish the fire. This is known as direct cooling. We can see how small an amount of water was needed to gain access into the compartment.